Good morning everyone, Clay Herger with ATX Precision. My intention is to continue our look at ballistic apps. Right now we're going to look at how do we set up applied ballistics and use it in the field start to finish. All right, I want to give you as much knowledge as possible before you get into the precision rifle world or if you're already in the precision rifle world I want to give you a tool that you can use uh, to make yourself more accurate and more consistent. All right, let's jump right into it. All right, so I'm on the applied ballistics screen. You know, like we talked about in the first, first segment, most apps you set up a rifle profile, then you set up your ammo, and then you enter in your environmental parameters. Uh, one of the things I like about applied ballistics, it's, it's very user friendly. Uh, everything's very intuitive. There's a few data fields that, that uh, cause a little bit of confusion though, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain those and unwind those for you. Okay, so let's get started. All right, I'm on the front screen with the rifle. Hit that plus up there. This is where I create a firearm. We'll just call this guy Tester. All right, uh, let's play with a 6.5 Creedmoor today, so we'll call it one and eight twist. Twist direction typically is right. Okay, the next data field down there, sight height. Sight height is a big source of error, so I wanna talk about how do you get sight height. A lot of these apps default to 1.5 inches. Now, 1.5 inches, you can think of that as like grandpa's 30-06 with a small objective lens, 34 millimeter or something like that. With today's bigger scope objective lenses in the 50, 44 to 50 millimeter range and some even bigger than that, 56 millimeter range, your side height is going to be quite a bit larger. All right? Side height is a critical measurement. That's where the big source of your error comes from, especially as you get into uphill, downhill shooting. Okay? Most of your bolt action rifles are generally somewhere in the neighborhood of two inches if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter objective. All right? Most of your AR style platforms, uh, Ruger Precision Rifle, any AR platform, or these Desert Techs, they're gonna be closer to three inches. Okay? So let's, let's talk about how do you measure the, the side height. Okay, I'm gonna do demonstrate on the Desert Tech and then I'll grab another bolt gun to show you that. Okay. Alright, side height just simply is the center of your windage knob down to the center of the chamber. Okay. In the Desert Tech with the chamber set back, you've got to eyeball this and measure down to where you interpret the center of that barrel channel is. Okay. I recommend Use a pair of calipers, get in there really close, get down to eye level with it. Look at that thing. But you're measuring from the center of this windage knob down to the center of that barrel chamber. Like I said, on these Desert Techs, a Ruger Precision Rifle or an AR-15 or AR-10 style platform, it's going to be pretty close to three inches. Okay. Now let's take a look at a good old traditional bolt action rifle. Okay. In this case, you can measure from the center of that windage knob, and you can actually see the center of the bolt. Okay. That's where you're going to measure from. Okay. You want to get down to eye level. Again, I recommend a good set of calipers. Get on there and eyeball it. Get, get level with it. All right. Something like this is probably going to be close to 2, maybe 2.25 inches uh, for, for a setup like this. Most of my bolt guns in my safe, they're all right around 1.95 to 2 inches. Okay. okay, so now we've got side height measured. We'll use the bolt gun that we just measured. So we'll type in 1.85 for this example. Sight offset typically is zero on most of your scopes. If you happen to be shooting something like a Dragon Off, those have a right and left offset, but generally that's going to be zero. All right, for our reticle, let's just pick a... We'll go with a Vortex reticle on this one. We'll call it a first focal plane just for simplicity, and we'll stick with minutes of angle for this one. Uh, you can tell it what your turret graduation's in. It's going to give you a decimal number, so I, I typically put these as one. Elevation correction factor. Uh, a lot of people ask me, what does that mean? You, you know, most of our modern scopes that are made right now, when, when you tell it to dial one minute of angle or one mil, it is dialing one minute of angle or one mil. Your reticles are very precise, very accurate, uh, 
Now, that wasn't the case 15, 20 years ago. A lot of times you would get a scope. It says it was in minutes of angle, but in fact, each time it, it clicked, it may have been 0.3 minutes of angle instead of 0.25. There's a way to figure that out. Uh, if, if you're really interested in that, uh, on a, the Applied Ballistics site, which will have that website up, it goes into a, a long explanation of how to do that. But generally speaking, if you've got a modern scope made by a reputable company, that, that elevation correction factor and windage correction factor will be one. So a lot of people are really concerned about that. It's, it's not that big a deal, again, if you're using a, a, a pretty new and, and reputable company scope. Okay, so we've got our, pro, our rifle profile built. Now we've got to build an ammunition profile on Applied Ballistics. So come up here, hit the plus. From our bullet library, we're shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor, so we'll go to the .264. And for sake of argument, let's just come down and use Hornady. They're coming on strong in the 6.5 Creedmoor world, uh, so they've got some good products out there. Let's, let's try the ELD match, the 147 grain. Okay, again, it'll pull up the ammo profile. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. Leave it the default Hornady ELD match if you want to. It's got all your parameters, diameter, weight, length. So for mu muzzle velocity, we'll just put in 2650 as a starting point and we'll reverse it back later. Okay, moving on down. Uh, muzzle velocity variation. There's a way to figure out what does your powder do in temperature. Uh, it, it, the process involves putting your, your ammo in the freezer, putting it in something warm. Seeing what the difference is, again, if you want to go down into that granularity, I suggest you go to the Applied Ballistics website and Brian's uh, article will walk you through that complete process. Okay, uh, I typically, I found that it, 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 it wasn't necessary uh, for what I'm doing. All right, moving on to atmosphere standards. ICAO is, is our, our default. Uh, if you want a detailed explanation of the differences between the atmosphere standards, again, Brian does a good job of breaking that down. Cutting to the chase for most of us, let's just leave it ICAO. All right, drag model, G7. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask us, what's ballistic coefficient? Should I use G1, should I use G7? All right, basically ballistic coefficient is how well does a bullet retain velocity? All right, a sleek modern bullet is gonna keep its velocity a lot longer than a blunt uh, round nose 30-30 round, for example, okay? Now, they, when they look at drag models, G1 versus G7, they've got to start with a shape to do their computer simulations. G1 is based off of an older bullet shape, older projectile shape. Okay, G7s, they're based off of more of our VLD style bullets that are coming out now. That would be a lot of your burger VLDs or hybrid styles. Uh, Hornady's ELD falls into that category, and there's a number of other other bullet makers that are that are making bullets in that that very low drag or low drag for, uh, format. What I would recommend in cutting to the chase, if you're using a bullet that's come out in the last 10 to 15 years, I would recommend sticking with the G7. Now, as you compare numbers, if you look at the same bullets G1 versus G7 BCs, the G1 numbers are going to be higher. All right, so. Let's take, for example, the BC, the G1 BC on one projectile, projectile may be 0.6. Its equivalent on the G7 uh, drag model is about 0 0.3, 0 0.32, somewhere in that neighborhood. All right? They're both saying the same thing, essentially like miles per hour versus kilometers per hour. They're measuring similar, essentially the same thing, but one number is a little higher than the other. So don't fall into the marketing if you just look on a box and see a higher number. That may not be the right choice for you as far as bullets go. A lot more goes into that, that choice. And that discussion is, is a very in-depth discussion that's uh, probably better saved for a later date. Uh, again, I'd recommend if you're using a modern bullet, one of these ELDNs or burgers, uh, go with the G7 BC drag model. All right, jumping down here to zero data. This, this is going to bring up two of our really powerful tools of ballistic apps and two things that a lot of people don't realize they have at their fingertips. I'll start off with the zero atmosphere, okay? This is one of those features that allows us to zero it in Austin, Texas on a spring day, go up to Wyoming on an elk hunt in the wintertime, and the computer takes that difference of environmental parameters into account and gives you a solution based off that. So definitely check that enables zero atmosphere, OK? 
okay? I've got 1130 entered in as our altitude. That's what our range is up at Rubbly Peak Ranch, okay? Now you've got pressures absolute or not. You can check that or uncheck that, okay? If it's unchecked, you have a space to enter in barometric pressure and temperature, all right? If you check that, then it goes to station pressure, okay? When you tell it you want absolute pressure, that means you are sitting next to a weather station or a Kestrel that is giving you no kidding what the pressure is without respect to the altitude. Don't want to get too down into the weeds on that. For a further discussion on that, please see the Applied Ballistics website. Brian does a, a fantastic job of breaking that down uh, and giving you the science behind that. For me, I typically leave it unchecked so that I can enter in barometric pressure because I'm always carrying a GPS with me. All right, so we'll leave it 29.92. 75 degrees, good spring day here in Austin. Humidity, it's been about 50% lately. Humidity plays a very small role. It does have a role in your, your density altitude, the parameters of your bullet, but it's not as much as some people think. And, and that is one of those rules of thumb that we memorized back at the schoolhouse. For every degree of, of humidity, add this to it. What was really happening was the humidity was affecting the shooter. It wasn't affecting the bullet as much as we thought okay but if you don't know the humidity you can always default that to 50 percent okay that's powerful feature of the app number one is zeroing it at one altitude and going to work at another altitude all right let's jump up here to zero range height and offset here's the other really powerful feature of it most of us use zero range of 100 yards could use 200 yards it doesn't really matter uh, I'm going to use 100 yards, that's what I do on mine. Zero height and zero offset. All right, we've got the 147 grain plugged in, unsuppressed. At this case, we're going to sight it in so that it's, it's dead on at 100 yards. So in that case, zero height would be zero. Zero offset would be zero. Call that done. Now let's go in, create the same profile. Same bullet, same velocity. We're going to call this guy suppressed. Everything's still the same. We cited it in the same. Oops. Same temperature. Same humidity. Now when we throw our can on, every time it shoots low, an inch low, it's consistent every single time, which is the mark of a good suppressor, all right? Uh, you, your suppressors oftentimes will move your point of impact. That's not the mark of a, of, a, of a bad suppressor. What's the mark of a good suppressor is that it moves the same each time. All right, if it moves different each time, hey, maybe we need to look at, at uh, doing some troubleshooting. But in, the, in this case, let's say every single time it, it impacts one inch low. Okay. Now, when I stick my can on there, I just go to this new profile. I don't have to remember, well, it shoots a little bit low, so it's giving me this data. Now I'm shooting at 800 yards. Does that mean it's one inch low at 800 yards, or does that mean it's more? You don't have to think anymore. Okay, it takes all of that into consideration. And by creating two separate profiles, suppressed and unsuppressed, now we have a very powerful tool. I don't have to change or do any mental math with it. You can do the same thing if you've got a training round and then you've got a hunting round, for example. Hey, I shoot with this when I'm practicing all year long, and then when I go hunting, it, it shoots one inch high, one inch low, or left or right. Now the computer takes all of that into account for you and you don't have to think. Okay, so let's take a look at a solution here. All right, this is our unsuppressed load, shooting 800 yards. Let's turn our mover off. We're at 1130, we'll leave 30 point 05 inches of mercury, 65 degrees, five miles an hour out of the nine o'clock wind, spin drift is on. Okay, everybody always says, hey, what's that stability factor, okay? 
Again, Brian does a very good job of explaining stability factor, cutting to the chase. There's a calculation to figure out if you've got enough twist to spin a particular bullet weight. Okay? What you're looking for is if that number is close to 150 or above. If it's pretty close to 1.5, I'm sorry, not 150, 1.5, you're good. In this case, it's 1.65. If you're about 1.48, you're pretty good. Okay? If that was 0.9, for example, it may mean you've got too heavy of a bullet for your twist rate. So this helps you pick, okay, got a new rifle coming, what bullet do I want to shoot? This new bullet that I want to shoot, will it stabilize in there? Will it stabilize and take full advantage of the ballistic coefficient? In this case, it's above 1.5, so we're good. Again, don't look at it like, hey, if 1.6 is good, maybe I should try for 2.6. It, it's kind of once you hit that 1.5, you're, you're good. So, all right, let's take a look at a solution here. I'm going to go to chart mode. 800 yards, this thing is at 22 minutes of angle for our elevation correction. And with that right to left wind, or I'm sorry, that left to right wind, we've got 2.9 minutes of drift. Let's run the same thing with our suppressed and see what it comes up with. It's taken that into account that, remember, it was hitting low, so it's given us 23.0 minutes of angle for elevation. Makes sense, sounds pretty good. Okay, let's go back to our unsuppressed because that is our primary that we're gonna shoot. We're shooting at 22 at 800. All right, here's our final really powerful feature of an app. Now we can true it, okay? Let's say we're shooting at 800, we dialed in 22 minutes of angle. To get success, let's say it really took us 21 minutes. So let's go ballistic calibration. We're shooting at 800, and it really took us 21 minutes of angle. Very intuitive input here. All right. And one thing I found, you know, generally shooting a thousand yards or less, you only need that top row there. You don't need to put multiple points in there. Okay. All right. So we hit run. It reverse calculates a new muzzle velocity for us. Now it says, hey, we're shooting 27.05. Now we can choose, do we want to apply that calibration or not? In this case, yes. There we go, at 800 yards, it's 21. Now, when you true up your ballistic solver like this, you want to go back and shoot kind of a mid-range, somewhere a little past your halfway point. So I would say go back and shoot something at 600 yards and see if it is giving you good success at what it's calling for 13.4. See if you're getting hits at 13.5. All right, so again, after you true it, check it out somewhere a little past your halfway point on your, your range, okay? That's the other really powerful feature of a ballistic app. Now you have the ability to tune this so that your curve matches up at all the points. This is one of those things where I recommend doing fairly frequently. You know, you change lots of ammo, it's a good idea to true it up, check your zero, uh, make sure it's still shooting the same. If you try a different load, if you're a hand loader, definitely true that up as well. You know, in this case, we could go back and true up our suppressed, true up your hunting ammo, and then again, if you get to your final location, hey, I'm hunting elk in Wyoming next week, good idea to true it up there too, just to make sure that the calculations are doing what what you expect okay if we want to look at the output hey here it is on the head up display you can also do a ballistic calculation or ballistic calibration from that screen as well cancel out of that okay again very powerful tool you know it's a mathematical simulation of what a round is going to do given the environmental parameters and the equipment parameters one thing i would suggest the better you can measure your parameters, the better off you'll be. Uh, if you've got a good temperature gauge, not one that's plus or minus 10 degrees, if you've got a good altimeter, uh, you know, your GPS, uh, you've got a good weather report, hey, here's what the barometric pressure is, you know. Just like most things that involve a computer, garbage in equals garbage out. So I recommend getting as good of an instrument as you can to measure these things uh, that you can carry in the field with you uh, and take your time with that. Consistency is also key. You want to use the same thing each time. Same, same temp thermometer, same barometer. You know, get your information from the same source. Okay, that'll lead to success. All right, that's about all we've got for this app. 
Thank you very much for joining us. If you'll step on over to our next segment, we'll be talking about ballistic arc and we'll go through a lot of these same inputs. And then our final segment, we'll talk about how do we best use these in the field. Thank you for joining us. Look forward to the next round.